Thanks very much, David. And hello, everyone. Um, I am going to discuss Subscribe to Open, and I'll use annual reviews application of it uh, where an example is needed. But there is an active community of practice around Subscribe to Open. And just to say that we welcome the enthusiastic, uh, the skeptical, or just the plain curious to check out the website and also to attend our monthly meetings if you're interested. Uh, next, please, Howard. So Subscribe to Open is conceptually very simple. We ask that subscribing customers continue to subscribe. And if they do so in sufficient numbers, which in the case of annual reviews is essentially all of them because of our tight margins, then new volumes are published open access with no additional fees of any kind. If subscriptions are insufficient, then the paywall is retained and access is restricted to subscribing customers. Uh, next, here are some of the features of Subscribe to Open. First, it's a straightforward way to achieve diamond open access. As I said, there are no hidden costs. It uses existing budgets, existing relationships, and existing infrastructure. Uh, you might think of it as an evolutionary approach to open access. Uh, that said, in its impact, Subscribe to Open is genuinely transformative. It applies immediately to all authors in all institutions across all disciplines. So we believe that S2O or Subscribe to Open sets out a collaborative, rapid, transparent, and equitable move to open access. Next. Uh, here's where things stand with uh, Subscribe to, to Open implementation. Uh, this is from the community of practice. In 2021, there are currently eight publishers using Subscribe to Open to publish 74 journals. Uh, we are the only review only publisher in that list. The others are publishing um, primary journals uh, for the most part. Uh, next. This is just an example of the impact that Subscribe to Hope Open has had on one of our uh, titles, the Annual Review of Public Health. It flipped to open using Subscribe to Open in March of 2020. And in March of 2021, article downloads are five times higher than when it was behind the paywall. That's a social science journal and all of the content is open. Next, the big question uh, for us and for everyone around Subscribe to Open is sustainability. And it comes down to this question. Why should libraries participate in Subscribe to Open? There surely must be a temptation to cancel subscriptions and hope that others will pay the so-called free rider problem. The simple um, sort of esoteric answer is that if libraries take that choice, the conversion to open access will fail due to lack of support for subscribe to open and total access subscription will be retained. But I think that there are much more positive reasons to subscribe to open. Institutes of learning surely have a responsibility, indeed a privilege of uh, enriching the wider community. Uh, using subscribe to open, for example, the universities of Santiago, of Washington, of Glasgow, of Osaka can, without spending any additional money, provide every Santiaguina, every Seattleite, every Glaswegian, and every Osakan with access to high quality information. And this isn't just theoretical. These opportunities are being taken by public health departments, by social, pub, social justice organizations, uh, the parents, of uh, children on the spectrum, amateur astronomers, and so on. I think it should be a source of deep pride and satisfaction for subscribing institutions that they are providing research knowledge, they are fighting against ignorance and deliberate information, and they are reaching outside of their walls to empower their neighbors. Um, this responsibility that I think that they have should also be accompanied by recognition. And we intend to use geolocation to inform users that their free access to content is in part supported by their local subscribing institution, providing an acknowledgement of that institution 
within the neighborhood, within the city and within the state. So the goal of open access is to retain a large number of subscribers paying smaller amounts rather than a small number of subscribers paying large amounts. This approach of spreading responsibility and sharing credit, I believe, is healthy, fair and empowering. I do applaud the approaches that some publishers and major institutions are taking to achieve open access by centralizing publishing payments around a few elite institutions in a handful of countries. Subscribe to Open is a different approach. I think it's a complementary approach. It will help us move away from transactional relationships to a sense of collaboration amongst publishers and a wide range of ins institutions, and hopefully more and more institutions rather than fewer and fewer. As an aside, um, I think that publication is just the beginning of the process of connecting research to wider society. And we publishers and we institutions could together serve as a bridge between the two. And the S2 approach, I think, tees this up. Uh, as, as the other two speakers have said, um, and is true of subscribe to open, um, this demands transparency on the part of the publishers. And we are um, very happy and indeed keen to be transparent about our costs. There are a couple of um, practical um, benefits to subscribing institutions as well. Um, and that is in the case of annual reviews, access to reviews in advance. The uh, journals will flip to open access when the full um, volume is published. It'll provide perpetual access to content. And uh, in the case of annual reviews, access to 85 year old archive of content. And next slide, please. The technology and infrastructure needs of subscribe to open, I think, reflect, reflect the fact that this is an evolution of the subscription model. One thing that we would like to see is KBART data, uh, metadata reconfigured um, so that knowledge bases, discovery layers, and library catalogs can distinguish among different types of open access mechanisms. I think at the moment, uh, things are labeled either as subscriptions or as open access. And of course, subscribe to open is both a subscription and open access, and we would like to clarify that. There may be other uh, models of read and publish and, um, and, and the PLOS model that need clarification as well. Uh, there's a great need to work with uh, counter and subscribing institutions to provide the usage data that will meet the requirements of the customers. Hopefully, um, Google CASA, get FTR, and other um, authentication APIs can be involved in this. I think one of the big questions is how the subscription institutions will consider unauthenticated usage, which could come from inside their institution or outside. And I think conversations around this issue are beginning to take place. Um, as I say, I'm also very keen to work on the delivery of acknowledgements to unauthenticated users using geolocation uh, specific messaging. Uh, next slide, please, Howard. So looking ahead, um, our main task, I think, is to work collaboratively with libraries. And I will emphasize that the libraries are the ones that are going to make the decision on whether this is going to work or not. We're, we're in their hands. Um, I, I think we want to work on a shared mission to make scientific insights available, not just to researchers, but to these policymakers, business leaders, educators, and citizens that are grappling with many issues today. I hope that we'll be able to attract more partners in this task as uh, sub sub Subscribe to Open um, progresses. Funding agencies are already beginning to look at Subscribe to Open um, and it looks as though they're going to agree to um, contribute at some level. In fact, the Wellcome Trust have already said that they will. And I think the DFG in Germany as well, by reimbursing institutions that um, participate in subscribe to open programs. Um, there's a big question around launching new products. Uh, there are a couple of approaches to that that I wouldn't go into just now, but there is a way of collecting together a group of supporting institutions 
and launching um, new titles um, under a subscribe to open model. Uh, the need for financial transparency, transparency, as I've said, is fully acknowledged, it's, it's crucial. Uh, lastly, you may have uh, noticed that um, all of the participants in the subscribe to open community of practice and indeed the three of us speaking here today are smaller uh, society publishers, nonprofit publishers and small commercial publishers. The independence and financial health of this group of publishers, I think, is important to the future of knowledge dissemination. Uh, it's very agreeable that all of us are sharing our experiences and experiments, and, and we talk frequently amongst ourselves. These are not competitive approaches. I think they reflect the opportunities and challenges faced by different types of publishers, and I sincerely hope that we all succeed. And I think I have one more slide, but I'm, oh yeah, it's just a quote that I like from Oscar Wilde, which is, uh, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. So thanks very much. <laughs>